All right, so today's video is gonna be about my dev workflow. I'm gonna walk you through what I use on a day-to-day -day base to get my work done, what I use for, for projects, what my setup is like, how I use Git, all of it. So as you see on the screen right now, we're just in an empty terminal, and this is very much the starting point for my, my workflow. I work mostly on a terminal. All my tools are terminal-based, um, kind of a little bit old school like that, but. There's some really nice parts to it. So the very first thing is opening a tmux section, uh, session. So I do this by just running tmux. Now, there are a couple of nice things you can do. You can write some scripts to do some, some fuzzy finding and all, all that stuff. But um, I just use tmux like this. And I use it, I create sessions. I do some, some splitting. So I love doing this, especially when I'm testing stuff. I think you, you've noticed this on my like, I have enough code videos. Um, and I also really like it for different projects. So if I go here and I make there another, let's go, another project. I love using this here. And I use the, um, the numbers. You see you see on the left, there's, uh, there's numbers. So I'll go one for that. So I'll go um, uh, five, like this. Uh, and I love just kind of switching this around. On a good day, like for, for the whole week, I will tend to have Tmux running the entire time and my computer will be asleep and I, I never close anything because it's super useful. So for my work at Requesty recently, I've had to have um, WooCode and Klein, uh, their, their repositories up because I we were doing a couple of contributions. And so I kept them in different uh, Tmux ses uh, sessions like this. Very, very handy to just go back and, uh, and do your work. Um, I was, it's always there. Yeah, it's really nice. And the splits are obviously uh, very nice. And if you accidentally exit it, you can always come back. Um, that's kind of the extent to which I use Tmux. It's nothing crazy. It's a very simple use case. I uh, have just a nice theme. Um, and that's kind of it. Um, now we move on to the absolute bread and butter, which is NeoVim, or V, as I've uh, renamed it. So let's start like this. So this is NeoVim, as many of you know. First thing is control N, which I use for file tree. This is NeoTree. Um, and I use it for like basic files stuff. I'm not super religious about it. Um, I often like developing like this because I find a little bit of space. Uh, on kind of a wider screen, there's kind of an interesting reason why I have NeoTree on the left. And that is for padding. Um, I know if you, you can't, maybe you can't really tell this on the video, but if I look to the left, this is me looking where my cursor is right now. And I find that a little bit worse than looking almost dead on and having the code there. So actually, I really enjoy the padding. Um, that's why it's neutral, but also the, the file operations are nice. You have some, some nice filters. It's a, good, it's a good plugin. So let's just write a little bit of code. And how would I, how do I fully kind of utilize NeoVim? So first of all, if I do space FB, that brings me to my open buffers. Um, Let's have another one in package main. Um, let's have a function here that just prints hello world. I can't type. Uh, one thing you notice there is, first of all, I, I use the LSP a lot. Uh, you can see here some diagnostic information. Um, I can also do space FE. Oh, actually, I haven't... I haven't uh, Got a setup on this config, but uh, I've recently just made it so I can see all of the, um, all of these in one go. Um, yeah, which is nice. But um, for example, I have this here, and I have my open buffers on FB. Yeah, pretty handy. Um, obviously, need to save, and they appear on a, like a nice, nice little preview of there. So that's kind of the main thing. If I then go here and, and write um, hello. I often do uh, space D, go to definition. I use that a lot and I use the, the jump list quite a bit. So control O, control I, go back and forth. Um, another one dot go. Um, let's write something else here. Funk uh, world, FNT, print line, world. If I do uh, control little hats, gives me to like, it's like a quick switch. Um, and yeah, there's also other things. Um, 
if you do space gr, which is uh, go to references, I use this one a lot. And obviously the, the quick fix list is also really, really good. Um, what I often like doing is if I search for the world, world control Q in telescope, that was what the picker was, by the way, telescope, I forgot to mention. But if you do control Q, it will bring everything in telescope and put on a quick fix list. So you can just very quickly um, see if you're doing like a small manual operation on all these, these files. Um, and this will be really, really handy. Also, it works with macros. So if I record a macro here, uh, so, so if I do C next, one thing you'll notice that your cursor is on the first instance of, of that work, which is handy. Um, if I run, let's record a macro and I change this to be uh, planet instead of world. See next. If I then repeat and repeat again, that actually works on quick fix list, which is super handy. Actually, um, you know, the kind of first time that I could use Mac, that it clicked in my head that I could use macros and the quick fix list. Big, um, big life improvement. One other thing I have that is a quite normal but maybe slightly more subtle um let's say i have kind of spaces control s that saves automatically um formats automatically um let's say i do this here on save i always have formatting and it's like my first thing when i when i have a language that doesn't do this um i will have to install formatter or something and let me just go on to new so i can show you part of the dot files conform GitHub conf oh, where is it? New. Oh, I'll just go manual. Um, Lua init plugin. There it is. Conform. And conform. This is the magic line for most languages. So go. The LSP formats for you. In Zig, the LSP formats for you. Um, in Rust, I think it can. I can't remember why I put this here. But many languages. OCaml formats for you. You just need format on save with the LSP fallback for as a default, most things work. Let's go. That's a good use of Tmux right there. Okay, so that's mostly how I will use uh, near them. It's nothing super fancy. Anyways, like I'll hide it like this. Um, I have my, my buffers. This is a f uh, fine files, which I use quite a lot. Um, but for most, it's pretty vanilla. Nothing crazy. Um, one thing that I do have that is a good transition is if I do Alt K get a floating terminal and I always 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 have uh, lazy git on this floating terminal always um, so here this is lazy git no commits no nothing um, this is how I use git I love using it inside the terminal I love having this little pop-up window I can use the commands commands are fine um, I don't mind but um, I just like lazy git and the reason I like lazy git is actually not for speed, like you can do like A and then C, first commit. This is great, but the best features of lazy git are, in my opinion, to do with the way you can amend commits, which makes it super easy. So rebasing is incredible, like really, really nice. Um, sometimes you can't avoid it, but you gotta, you gotta hit a, an interactive rebasing, which is completely fine. Um, but one thing I will do, let's say I've committed all these files. I think actually, I don't think that another one belongs in this commit. So I can press space. I hit control P, which is a patch option. And let's say, hmm, what do I want to do here? I actually want to move this after. And I'm going to say adding another one. And there you go. Boom. That's just split that up into two commits. Super handy. One other thing I always do. Uh, I often do is okay if I go here and I say mm, planet planets no good actually this needs to be a public field let's say there's my change I hover over the commit I press shift a to amend I press enter boom that's it um, and other really nice stuff if I press T it reverts if I press T it reverts you know D to delete um, F to, to mark it as a fix up I don't use that uh, as much uh, cherry picking is also really useful it's going between branches um, it's very very nice um, one other thing that I want to kind of throw in here 
is if I create another branch and let's say I go from here fmd point line another planet um, let's say commit another planet and I'm in a branch remember let me switch back to main and let me let me go back to main.go and I'm gonna add like a planet like so adding planet different one how do I get these in sync I always rebase always rebase never merge don't merge if you yeah that's I'll, I'll uh, it's not even a hard take to be honest I think it just makes way more sense to not merge to n just don't merge and the reason is clean clean file tree cl clean uh, git history because I think it's very important to make sure your character clean readable for the next person and for yourself like when you're working to structure your work properly save it and make sure it's good right um and i think focusing on commits helps you do that um so for example on github and my, my repos i don't squash and rebase i just rebase so all the commits in your pr must be somewhat adequate so maybe a little much I respect others, but that's how I like to work. That's how we work at Request, actually, for those interested. Um, but it's important. So if I just hit R on uh, main here, simple rebase, and I'm back. Perfect. That's it. Um, what I will often do sometimes is rebase-i main, or what's going on here? Oh, uh, I don't have editor set up. That's weird. Um, I can do this. This is quite nice. Another planet. There you go. Oh, actually, that did not do what I thought it would. Um, but hitting the interactive rebase is often fairly nice. Um, oh, one thing you can do is squash commits. That is obviously going to give you a conflict. You can abort. Very nice. And that's actually that's the extent I use basically it mostly for the commits. Also, it's just an awesome project. The UI looks incredible. Looking at diffs, super, super nice. Um, it's just great. It's a great project. You can check it out. And very last thing that I do is actually two things. One more. Open code. Open code is the way that I like to interact with agents. So. Um, AI is very good at writing code, certain bits of code, um, and I use it. So here we go. Now it's uh, still getting used to it, to be honest. But uh, write a um, colon file that has some example functions. So I'll kind of let it work, um, kind of observe what it does. And um, here you go. That's done. Pretty, pretty well. It also uses your LSP. Very nice diffs, as you see here. Like it uses the LSP to figure out what's wrong. Okay, it's doing like a couple of examples, which is nice. Um, let it run. Let's see what it did. Example go. Here we are. Um, it's pretty good. I like it quite a bit for very specific tasks. I find it like pretty good at a lot of things especially making front end look pretty um and writing tests pretty good at that too um okay very last thing that i want to show you that is still quite important to my workflow open web ui i actually self-host this um and i use requesty of course i do as my my provider and i often like to interact with AI in this separate way from my code. So I'll write, I'll write some code, I'll come up um, with solution or something, and I will figure out, and I will kind of think about the problem and think about how I want to ask AI for help. So for example, um, searching is good, but actually if I'm searching for something very concrete, I will tend to just use Google because I quite like getting to like the bottom of the information. So for example, Something that I wouldn't do is what is the difference between BT, RFS, and EXT4. I could use this. It probably gives me a very good explanation. 
But the thing is, I think that this will be too high level. Right? So I will go over here, ext4 versus btrfs. And I'll come onto Reddit or a discussion or a lot of other stuff. You have a lot of good sources. Um, tend not to read this up here too much. But what it is very good at is, let's say, I have three Golang microservices. They communicate using HTTP. How could you test an integration? How could you write an integration test for them? So this is kind of an open-ended question. I'm going to let it go. OK, so it starts off good. Use Docker. Good approach. Um, of, well, kind of good approach. I probably wouldn't. Uh, integration tests, and what does it do? Um, OK, so these integrations here. OK, so it's running them separately. Um, oh, test containers. Cool. Good approach. Never knew that. This is a, one of the reasons I like it. I have no idea what this is. AI just kind of highlighted it to me. Um, An open web UI is just so nice. What is this? Look at it go. It's a Java library. Um, Docker base supports many services, easy to use. There you go. And three is mocks for dependent service for unit testing. Okay, so you can create mo mocks, uh, handler functions. Yeah. You see? And it's the follow ups, the everything. It's, it's just great. Open web UI. Love it, love it, love it. And that's about it in terms of my dev workflow. We've gone through my editor, my, my terminal, my use of uh, Git, and how I integrate AI into my workflow. I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, everything is done on, at least right now, on a, an Arch machine on Hyperlin. But for work, I use a Mac, which is great, but it is not Arch which makes me sad. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.